Well, I'll keep my camera at a wee bit of a low angle. Just, uh... Right, the story is, I, Sunday afternoon, there was fuck all going on because it was, uh... When I came back from Bill Whittler, it was raining, so... I thought, well, there's nothing really I can do. I'm not sitting indoors. And I thought, well, looking at Tesco's um, price range on Friday, was it? Was it Friday? I can't remember. Um, I decided that... Um, I would zip through and stock up on all my essentials that I'd uh, go through between now and maybe January or something like that. So I bought rice and pasta and lentils and uh, various other things, which were pretty reasonably priced in all, all honesty. Coffee and um, £3.50 for fucking uh, coffee meat, which is... Uh, Big difference from 5.65 in that co-op, eh? And then if you think about everything, um, I mean, I, I probably went over budget because I decided on buying these additional items which go into my storage box and then when I need it, uh, it's there because these things last for a couple of years. I have to say that the, the last time I'd done this sort of nonsense was about, uh, probably was about 18 months, two years ago, and... Uh, I'm now at the the low end of the stock, so to speak. But um, I'm sure you're not entirely interested in all that. But um, there's always a flip side to, to things. Well, there is with me, at least. And um, one of the, the reasons I came through as well, well, it, it, it doesn't really matter that. But uh, I, I, um, I'd been listening to uh, Magallic classical music on the Sunday afternoon as I drove through uh, to Bertha. I'm at the Creef Road store because these road works seem to be, well, there's nobody working today, is there? So it uh, looks like I can get a easy exit straight on to the Creef Road. But um, the point of my uh, opening camera here is... Um, I'm probably enemy number one in Tesco. I've, I, th I think I've been, I've been lulled. I think my picture will be shown in all the national stores when I walk through. The security will, it will be flagged up at least, unless I wear a trilby or a, you know, a derby hat or something like that. Sunglasses, you know, or grow a beard maybe. I don't know. Yes, I think I will grow a long beard down to my waist but um, what happened was um, I had been listening to some really excellent classical music on my drive through and I was uh, just feeling quite relaxed especially after this morning's church service etc and I um, walked into the store and the music was absolutely fucking awful it really was it was enough to make you puke I mean, I'm not a fan of, um, I mean, this, I couldn't believe it this morning. I, I, mean, I really am. I'm, I'm going to go to town on this, this vlog, actually. I, first thing I do in the morning, generally, is, 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 is have a check on the emails. And um, it's just habitual. It's you, you open the computer and you check um, your YouTube listings, perhaps. You check emails. You maybe... Um, well, I check the, uh, the the news headlines because I don't watch the news, you see. And I couldn't believe that the main headline was some fucking thing about Eurovision Song Contest. Now, I, I've got a, a, a pretty good memory of, about uh, the Eurovision Song Contest. I mean, I can remember right back to when Israel, Israel won it in 1979 with a song called Hallelujah. But uh, it wasn't uh, in, in national fucking news. I don't, I don't think it even made the newspapers. Certainly didn't make uh, make any news broadcasts. Maybe just for a couple of seconds, perhaps. But uh, I couldn't believe it was the main headline. It was above everything. And um, Vicky Leandros, I think she was Greek, and she uh, sung uh, Come What May. She could sing it in French and English, actually. The French version's not bad. Um, I 
Anyway, she won it in 1972. Did she? Or was it Dana? The Irish girl. Dana, perhaps it was Dana. I don't know. I can't remember now. No, Dana won it in 71. Anyway, I, was, I, I wasn't a fan of fucking Eurovision Song Contest at all. But um, because uh, things were kind of spoon-fed to you, if you didn't know these things, um, you were kind of left like a fool in a uh, playground conversation or something. Somebody brought it up, you were... Uh, no, I don't know anything about that. And everybody tittered and laugh. So I think it's it's gone to that stage now that um, if you don't know anything about Eurovision, then you're, you know, there's something wrong with you, an imbecile. So I had to close down the Beauty News website. I thought, I'm fucking interested in this. I, I, it's gone from uh, 25 seconds of, of reading the headlines down to about three seconds. I just closed it down immediately. It annoys me. But anyway, back to the story. I, I walked in to the store and this music, I, I thought, there's no chance I'm listening to this. So I went to the customer service uh, desk immediately and I actually had a trolley with me today. Could you believe it? And I pushed it over and she wasn't very pleasant. Um, <laughs> I said, uh, um, is there anything you can do about the music at all? She said, what music? I said, the music was playing in the background, uh, everywhere except here. And um, she said, oh, I don't think so. I said, well, can you find out? And she said, what, what is, what's wrong with the music? I said, it's, it's awful. And she said, well, there's not a lot we can do about that. I said, well, yes, there is. You can turn it off. Or at least turn it down or change it. She said, well, I don't have any authority to do that. I said, well, who does? She said, well, you need to speak to the manager. I said, well, can I speak to him then? I'm not joking. So anyway, the, um, I waited and waited and waited. Security were looking at me and there's obviously communications were starting to fucking filter through the store. There was a complete lunatic in the uh, <laughs> in customer services section. And um, so a manager uh, approached and says, uh, hello there, blah, blah, blah. What can we do, with, do for you? I says, um, the music, it's, it's annoying. I just walked into the store. I, was, I just told them, I said, I've been listening to classical music. It was absolutely brilliant. And, uh, and now I've got to walk into this den. Okay, sorry about that. Camera cut out because there's no memory left. Um, yeah, so he says, um, do you have any earphones? I says, um, no, I don't. Why? And he says, well, you could have popped them in your ears. And I says, that's not the kind of response I expect from, uh, from you. He says, well, I'm not going to turn it down just because you don't like the music. I said, well, you know, I says, it's, it's, it's not good. I says, um, I've come in here um, on a Thursday and it's... Um, you know, you get Frank Snatcher and something like, uh, and uh, Dean Martin and stuff. It's uh, it's much more pleasant to shop in. I said, that's just a noise. It's, it's, it's irritating. He says, well, uh, why don't you come back on Thursday? I said, well, perhaps I will. But unfortunately, I've made a long journey to get here, so I'm going to have to persevere. I said, but I'll tell you something else. I'm not going to buy as much as what I was going to buy. He says, well, that's, a, that's your choice. I says, well, look, I, I'm, I'm not satisfied with your response. I says, not, not really. I says, uh, the least you could have done is, um, you know, slipped on a different uh, variety of music, you know. So I he says, well, that's not going to happen. So I kind of walked away from him. But strangely, I was um, around by the... Um, I was around where you get the uh, kitchen roll and I heard the music... Uh, been altered and I thought well I wonder if that's uh, he's had a second thoughts to it he maybe thinks I'm a mystery shopper or something and uh, that was my challenge so anyway he's um, the music I got it wasn't that much better but it certainly would have been better than that fucking Eurovision shit but um, I got my bargains and um I'm not giving you a long tale, uh, I have to say, I'm not giving you a long, long story in the whole matter, but what's happened, I'm look, keep, keeping my camera low because there's so many people milling around, there's nothing else to do this Sunday, so we're wandering about car parks, and um, 
<laughs> I um I went to the checkout and the first thing I said to the girl as is uh, or the lady at least I says um I was in the Edinburgh Road store on Friday and I paid one pound ten pence for this uh, jar and you you guys are charging one twenty five is there any explanation for it? But she didn't have any explanation. And then I felt sorry for her because um uh, I thought it's maybe not in her uh, remit or jurisdictions to know anything about this. So I thought, well, the kindly part of my nature took over. I said, I'll just forget it. Just oh, I'm happy to pay the extra fifteen pounds, but I'm just want to make the make the comment. Anyway, she started sifting through my stuff, and you've got a club card. I said, yes, yeah. She has uh, there's no no discount on that, and she started r rushing through everything and. and uh, and then she says, uh, I said, well, how much are these? Because I, I saw it on the shelf at this price. And she says, they're 70 pence each. I says, that's not, not correct. It's the four for a pound. Uh, sorry, the four for two pounds. And uh, this time I wasn't going to budge. And uh, there was this low vibrational chap who was next to me in the queue. I think what had happened, he, he was very irritable himself. I don't know if it was the humid weather. I don't know. That sometimes you get this in, in, in the changing weather, and after a nice day, you, you get like, this cloud and drizzle. But um, it, it, it was that matter of assumption. He just assumed that um, because we both uh, joined the checkout queue at the same time, and I had a trolley and he had a basket with about. I think about five items in it, uh, that he was automatically uh, assuming that I would say, look, you've only got five items, do you want to just jump in first? Sometimes I would have done that, but I, I thought, fuck, I can't be bothered today. I, I, I don't want to be milling around here for too long. I hate it with that music. So he, I could see he was rather irritated that uh, I hadn't done those generous deeds and I just continued to load my stuff onto the conveyor belt. But um, eventually it started to get really irritable when I started challenging the lady on every single thing that was going through the, in the price. It's not because I, was, I had insufficient funds in my wallet. It's just that I don't want to be conned. I don't want some price to be advertised on the shelf and then when you get to check out, they fucking forget about it. Someone's got to challenge these people. So I did, and I thought, well... No, I, I want you to get this checked out, please. So they they buzz that thing and switch a light on above you. You know that thing with uh, it's like a, a search light that they use in the you know the I think lifeboats and stuff have them. But this one comes above you in the checkout queue, and um, you you feel illuminated. And um, so this. Nippy supervisor came along and you know told her exactly what the problem is. It was repeated by the the service assistant at the checkout and uh, she said, you want me to find out for you? I said, well, yeah, well please, uh, yeah, that's the idea. And um, so she bolted away and I knew then, I just knew that I was going to egg in my face for some reason. I just thought to myself, here we go, she's going to She's coming back, I can see by her body language, she's all puffed out in the chest and she's all fucking smug. Uh, I've read that price wrong. Well, anyway, she came and she said, it's £2.80 for four. And I said, well, that, if that's that meant to be an eight, because uh, it looked like a zero from where I was fucking standing. She said, well, maybe you need specs. That's what she said. So I didn't say any more. I thought, uh, I'm not, I, I've had enough. If, if, I, if I say something to her, she's going to call the manager and the manager's going to come down and say, right, you're fucking barred. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, I knew, I knew by the time I um, started to trundle out of the store with my fucking pasta and lentils that um, I was all, all, all ready. Um, all the staff in that store had been uh, sent a memo. That crazy bastard is, uh, is going out the store. Keep an eye on him for 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 you know for the next couple of years, please. 
So the security guard was staring at me, so I decided I would just stop in front of him and uh, I re pulled out my, re my receipt for the groceries and I went through with every single item. I'll show you what I did with every single item on the receipt. I don't have the receipt, to, it's in my pocket, it's in my wallet. But uh, so I'm not going to reach into my pocket because I can't get my hand in when I'm sitting down in this chair. But I can um, get my hands on this through my bag. And this is what I use. It's a magnifying glass. It probably looks a bit dirty on, this, uh, on the screen at the moment. But it's a, it's a magnifying glass. You see? Doesn't seem to magnify that very well, does it? But it, um, let me see. Yes. Anyway, it's needed a bit of a clean, I think. But I just stood in front of the security guard with this magnifying glass, going down my receipt very, very slowly. And then I came out and I thought, I felt quite weak at the knees, actually. I felt, oh God, I think I've moved into a low vibrational zone. Quite unnecessarily as well. So I just decided that, it, well, was it worth coming through, Andrew? And I thought to myself, well, I've, I've overspent on, uh, on, on my budget for the day. I've obviously got enough uh, dry goods to last fucking through any famine for the next two years, but uh, yeah, at least it's all done now. Yeah, in that respect, uh, because I'm going to go to Guatemala in October. If I'm going to go to Guatemala, I don't want to be spending anything unnecessarily. So if I've got everything that saves me fucking trundling through here, because I, I really don't like this place, it's, it's just a... It, <laughs> I just do not like uh, Bertha, I just... Uh, there's something about it that... Uh, I think I worked here too long, I was working and uh, for years in this uh, vicinity, and I, I think I got... Uh, uh, Bertha sickness from uh, from the establishment I worked in, and also the people who occupied that building. I, I do I do mean that, you know. It's, uh, it had a, a a very negative impact on my whole on my whole whole mental health. But, um, I think what the, the biggest problem of us was, uh, Lord Camera Andrew, there's too many people. Uh, the biggest problem of us, I, I, I found at least, was that there was, there was um, there's no wit, there was no humour. There's no such thing as wit in Bertha. You know, I, I mean, I, I've travelled all these different places, and I've been, if you travel up into the western parts of Scotland and stuff, I mean, uh, I mean, you've got to watch where you are, I mean, but certainly the further north and west you go, people are much more jolly. And if you crack a joke, they're, they, they, they genuinely laugh, they, they have a big smile and they have tears in their eyes and they, they titter away for quite a while and they say, oh, it's so funny. But if you said anything in Bertha, they just look at you with a blank fucking expression and say, that got anything to do with the Eurovision Song Contest? That type of thing, you know? But uh, anyway, I shall depart from here. Our camera's low because there's so many people just fucking going around and it's not very conducive for good viewing, so I, I appreciate that. Thank you for watching.